Hello and welcome to live coverage of the Apex Gaming main event, the $20,000 Modern Invitational. I'm Todd Tandy Anderson, joined by Ross Merriam. Say hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. We have uh, 65 players in the event today. 65 on the nose. That is exactly enough for seven rounds of Swiss. Yep. So the smallest seven-rounder possible could make things very interesting as we get into the later rounds, but... You know, the early rounds, still very important to get off to uh, a good start. And uh, a very interesting metagame. Yeah. You know, uh, Racto Scam, the most played deck, unsurprisingly, with nine copies. But I think the big surprise for both of us, eight copies right behind Rakdos is Rhinos. There's seven teamers. There's one four-color Rhinos list. But a lot of crashing footfalls in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the first times we actually came up to the Apex uh, Gaming Home Store here in Caldwell, Ohio, I remember doing coverage of their Season 1 Invitational uh, a year and a half ago, and the Cascade decks were everywhere. And over time, I think it slowly dwindled down a little bit, but now they're back in full force. Yeah, and it, we saw actually yesterday's Moto Challenge results. There were multiple Rhinos decks in the top eight yep. featuring Tishana's Tidebinder yes. from Lost Caverns of Ixalan. So that's where we're going to be starting today. We got a couple players adopting this brand new tech for the Rhinos deck, and one of them is one of the strongest players in our field, Dawn Delosier. So that's where we're going to be starting with a round one feature match. She's going to be up against James Mangus playing four color Cascade, Omnath, Beans, whatever you want to call it. Well, <laughs> this build, just to be clear, there's a there's like an Omnath control version. Uh, this is the Cascade version. He's going to be playing four copies of Bloodbraid Elf and Shardless Agent. The Shardless Agent is a guaranteed hit for uh, up the Beanstalk. And then Bloodbraid Elf is most of the time going to be Beanstalk either through itself or with another Shardless Agent, but playing four copies of Teferi Time Raveler to help uh, give a little bit of deviation when you need that type of effect later in the yeah, game. when you need a little interaction. Right. Uh, so that is the matchup. Don Delosier on Rhinos with... Uh, I'm sorry, it's some Tishana's, Tishana's Tide Binder versus James Magus on four color Omnath Beans. Uh, we're going to be heading down there in a minute, but before we do, I want to just talk a little bit about what we're playing for today and what we're going to be watching. Uh, so, this is the culmination of season number three here at the Apex Gaming Home Store in Caldwell, Ohio, on the Apex Invitational Series, sponsored by TCG Player. Uh, today's uh, tournament is a $20,000 prize pool paying out to top 64, which means one person is not going to get $100. One sad person. Yeah. Uh, so whoever drops first <laughs> doesn't get the $100. <laughs> so expect everyone to play every round today. Uh, first place prize is going to be $4,000 up top. That is today's biggest prize, but... On top of that, they also get the murder weapon. <laughs> this is the Apex <laughs> Invitational Champion Trophy. Yeah. This is a honk and chonker, and it's nice. You can find this in two places. One here on the Apex series, and two in the newest version of Clue. And also in the True Crimes <laughs> podcast that you watch. Uh, this, uh, on top of that, we are also giving away eight of these incredible Raghavan playmats to yes. the top eight, including this one for the champion. The other ones say top eight at the top right-hand corner of it. Uh, but this one is just for first place. We also have uh, another playmat that we're actually selling for $20 in-house right now, this Force of Negation playmat. This one is pretty sweet. Uh, we're actually almost sold out. But uh, we are looking to do a restock on these uh, soon uh, for apexgaming.gg's website. So keep an eye out for that. We'll be posting on Twitter and stuff. If you're a fan of Force of Negation and want one of these awesome playmats, uh, that's where you can find it. But if you want that Ragavan playmat, well, you should have been playing on the Apex series all year and uh, do well today. <laughs> yes. So uh, we're, we're going to give away eight of those. We're going to give away a ton of cash. And uh, more importantly, we're going to give away some glory of being the Season 3 Apex Invitational Champion. Right, right. All right, so uh, without further ado, the players have been waiting in the feature match area for a few minutes now. So let's head on down there, and we're going to watch Don DeLosier on Rhinos with uh, Tiana's Tidebinder versus James Mangus on Four Color Beans. The Beanstalk deck, uh, just, you know. I just want a Tidebinder to turn off a bean. Yeah? Come on. Just stop one card draw or stop uh, the Cascade? It takes away all the abilities. When you counter the the trigger of a permanent, it takes away all the abilities. Oh, that's a cool one. As all long right. as the Tidebinder's on the battlefield. These players here, starting off the game pretty quickly. Mangus, nothing on turn one or two. Don going to fetch on the instep, looking for a land, perhaps thinking about cycling. Alorian revealed. 
Let's get Lord and Revealed on the screen, because Lord and Revealed is one of the newer additions to Rhinos from the Lord of the Rings set. Uh, it allows you to cycle it for just one mana to go get any island, that's Basic Island, or one of those powerful dual lands, even the Triumphs. And uh, it's also a blue card, so it can be pitched to things like Force of Negation and uh, Subtlety. And the reason why they're playing this card is, A, it dodges your own Cascade effects, but also it... Cycling for one to go get a land is almost like being a land. Yeah, these decks don't have a ton of early plays, so you often have a mana lying around in the first couple turns. Right. Uh, so you can use that to help fix your mana, and then it's a much better draw than a land in the late game. So it gives these decks a little bit more you know, late game punch and a little bit more card advantage going along, which is excellent. Uh, and then, as you said, you know, increases the density of blue cards you have. Subtlety has not often or not always been a huge part of these decks, but with Rakdos Scan being such a big part of the metagame, Subtlety is an excellent card in that matchup. So four copies in the main deck, along with four copies of Force of Negation in Dawn Delosier's list. She needs as many blue cards as she can get. All right, we have a suspended Crashing Footfalls here on turn number two. Not where you want to be, but I do see a couple of those Cascade effects lying around for Dawn here. So let's see if that's what she wants to be doing over the next few turns. Maybe wants to defend a little bit against what James Mangus is going to do. We're going to go back his way in just a moment on turn number three. Both these players playing Shardless Agent and Cascading into something. And Mangus is going to play that card advantage role with up the Beanstalk alongside Pitch Elementals like Fury and Solitude. All right, turn number three. Yeah, Land this, number three. This is the big turn for, for both Ooh. players. Here's to Fairy Time Raveler. Yeah. And Don does have a Fury in hand, but Fury alone is not going to kill a Teferi on five loyalty. And a useless Force of Negation drawn just in time. Now Don has the ability to Fury here on the Teferi and deal four to it, but that doesn't quite get the job done. And... Uh, I don't really know how she's going to get out of this one. This looks pretty dicey. She also has a Boat Crusher Giant in hand, so the Stomp can can combo. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, one-two punch to Fairy down, and now things are looking a little bit better. But she no has third that, land. But she does have that Force Negation here to protect herself from an up the, up the Beanstalk. And if she's able to pick up a third land in the next turn or two, she can maybe get some of those Rhinos down. Yeah, has a Violent Outburst in hand, kept that one, exiled a Flame of Anor to the Fury, so... Uh, you know, a third land here, and uh, the Rhino engine, so to speak, will be online. All right, quick fetch here for Mangus. Probably going to go get a basic planes. Maybe gets a shock land if he's not afraid of dealing himself too much damage. We're going to probably cast Omnath would be my guess, but Blood Raid Elf is also on the menu. Yeah, plenty of four drops here. We'll see which one Mangus opts to go with. You often see players wait on their Omnath until turn five so they can immediately follow it with a fetch land, mm -hmm. get that double trigger, and recoup all four mana that you used to play it. All right, well, I have to imagine Force Negation is going to counter... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Force Negation is going to be countering this uh, up the Beanstalk. Don understands that once that's on the table, his deck goes into overdrive, and there we see it, but... Two creatures played for just four mana and got that Force of Negation 2, Value Town for Mangus. Yeah, that's a four for one. Okay, Don Delosier draws another Force of Negation but doesn't have the mana to play Violent Outburst. We're going to go yeah. back Mangus' way. Not sure what the third card in, left in hand for Don is. It's another Merktide region. It's a Merktide? Yeah, so we do have a blue card, which is okay. nice. We have a blue card. Also, four cards in the graveyard, so one more card in the yard will allow that Merktide to be cast or an untapped land. All right, Mangus but. attacks for five. Don down a seven. On the upkeep, Mangus says, wait. Ice you. Oof. Uh. Well, we're at seven. This attack's only for five. That'll leave Dawn another turn, and then the footfalls in suspend will come off. Well, we know Mangus has another Oof. fire ice yep. in hand, so the game is just about wrapped up. We're going to say go and fire on the upkeep to play around the force navigation more than likely. Let's see if James sees that play. Ooh, yep, looks like he does. All right, and we're going to fire you on your upkeep. We are too. Don packs it in. Game number one goes to James Mangus. Yeah, it's just tough stuff. This is a, for both players, when you're playing Shardless Asia, getting to three mana is really important. Right. Don unable to do that in the first game. You have to do a nice balancing act when you play Cascade decks, right? Because you don't want to flood too badly, but if you don't hit your third land, you're in a significant amount of trouble. And there we yeah. saw Don just never play the third land. And, you know, Don Solis has 21 lands, but also three copies of Lorien Revealed. Yeah. And we saw our cycle one in that game, so only drew two out of 24 effective lands. 
All right, so uh, as these players reach for their sideboard to get some help in the matchup, uh, Ross, why don't you give me Don's side of things? How do you think Don's uh, Rhino's deck is going to be signing against James Mangus's Beanstalk? Okay, so in the sideboard for Don Delosier, I see three copies of Fury to supplement one in the main, one Endurance, one Tishana's Tidebinder to supplement two in the main, three Force of Vigor, two Flame of Anor with one in the main, two Mystical Dispute, two Blood Moon, and one Gemstone Caverns. Well, uh, there's one thing I know for sure. And it's the Gemstone Caverns will not be coming in. Because <laughs> yeah, Don that, will be on the play in this That game. one's uh, when you're on the draw kind of thing, huh? Yeah. I have to imagine the Tishana's Tidebinder will come in. There's so many triggers to counter right. out of this bean deck. Not just up the Beanstalk, but the Evoke Elementals. Even Omnath. Mm -hmm. You know, when you counter the ETB draw trigger on Omnath, it loses all of the landfall abilities. That's cool. <laughs> yes. So That's you really just cool. turned it into a vanilla 4-4. Four four. So, yeah, I believe the Tidebinder will uh, come in as well. Um I wouldn't be surprised to see the Flame of Anors come in, too, because, you know, Omnath is a big part of this deck. You want answers to it. That's your best answer to it. And you have more Wizards in the deck now with Tidebinder. All right, on the other side of things, James Mangus's Omnath Beans deck. How do you think he's going to be sideboarding against Don's uh, Rhino strategy? Okay, his sideboard has three copies of Obsidian Charmaw, one Lavinia Azorius Renegade, two Inevitable Betrayal, two Commandeer, one Magmatic Sinkhole, three Force of Vigor, one Chalice of the Void, and two Leyline of Sanctity. Uh, the Chalice of the Void will almost assuredly come in. That's a card that you can hit off of your Cascaders that is excellent in the matchup because right. when you cascade into it, you always cast it for zero. Yep, and you lock out all those rhinos afterwards. It's yeah. a little awkward if you're trying to hit beans, but it's there for that exact reason, so that you hit the, the chalice sometimes. Yeah, not sure I like much of anything else, though. All right, well, we are off to the races in game number two. These players, no stranger to the spotlight, and they are playing quickly. Don Delosier on the play, going to fetch uh, Ketra Triumph. Mangus matches with Rogren Triumph, and Don's going to untap for turn number two here in just a moment. Maybe he has ice, maybe going to suspend a footfall, so we'll wait and see. Yeah. I could see the Commandeers coming in as well. Oh, Just yeah. Commandeer or Crashing Footfalls. That's yeah. pretty good. Gimme, gimme. Here we go. Just land number two for Dawn and no ice. I see a bunch of lands in Dawn's hand this time, but uh, also has Violent Outburst. Here's a Beanstalk. Do you have the answer? Well, that's what you want to see on turn two when you're a bean deck. Dawn here, I think... Contemplating a response. I'm not sure exactly what she's going to do. Going to go fetch him with Wood of the Hills. Taking a look through the deck for green or red land. It's forest. That means we got something. Or we brought in Blood Moon. Potentially. Uh, both of these decks can play through Blood Moon pretty effectively, so I doubt either player would want it. Any copies. All right. Well, here we go. Third land finally for Don Delosier, but she's going to pass back. Going to go for a Violent Outburst on the instep. I see a Shardless Agent hanging out over there as well. I think she has a Flame of Venora at the ready in case Mangus does hit that Chalice of the Void. Oh, and a Tidebinder. She might actually snipe this land. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going to go ahead and Violent Outburst. Let's see if Mangus has a response. We're going to flip until we hit... Crashing footfalls is quick. Ooh. Love love the quick. Oh, no! <laughs> no! Steal your rhinos! This can't be happening! <laughs> Steal your rhinos, draw a card. Oh, and you draw a card! No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Well, I can't handle it. That's a disaster. All right, back Dawn's way. <laughs> Not a lot of good answers to rhinos in the rhino deck other than making your own rhinos. Right. Well, that's exactly what she's about to do because we know she has a shardless agent. She might want to get a little frisky. If she has another violent outburst, she can get a little frisky and wait and see if James wants to go for that end of turn fetch and maybe she gets to snipe it. Yeah, her okay. other cascade is a shardless agent, though. Okay. It, it is tempting because she just drew a blood moon. So if you can stop this fetch, maybe James doesn't have another fetch land, then you can you know, play your Cascader, then you could Blood Moon and really catch up in the game, but it is a risky line. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what Dawn is thinking, because otherwise oh. she would have went Shardless Agent. So, Dawn says, yeah. wait. <laughs> Hold! All right, we're going <laughs> to stifle you. Let's get the Tidebinder on the screen. This thing is 
a uh, brand new card from Caverns of Ixalan, and uh, for three mana, you get a 3-2 with Flash. And when it enters the battlefield, you counter up to one target activated or triggered ability. If that ability was an, uh, of an artifact, creature, or planeswalker, it's countered this way. That permanent loses all abilities right. for as long as it remains on the battlefield. I didn't realize it didn't include enchantment. They somehow just excluded up the beanstalk from, uh, from Tidebinder. Yes, yes, yes. What jerks. Yeah, sorry, buddy. All right, another fetch land, though, from Mangus. We're going to go ahead and fetch. My guess is a basic planes. Seeing Dawn get that forest on two is a pretty big, big red flag that maybe a Blood Moon is in your future, so you got to be a little bit wary. There it is. Dawn here going to take eight down to ten and uh, needs to play next turn that Shardless Agent to be able to put up some defense. Yeah, unfortunately, Mangus did have another fetch land, so the Blood Moon is not going to be super effective at this point. So, if you can potentially lock him out of blue mana, that would be nice, but you definitely have to play the Shardless Agent next turn, so Blood Moon's going to be two turns from now. He has two more turns to press this advantage. You really got to hope his hand is pretty poor at this point. Mm -hmm. The Commandeer was such a huge swing. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a free steal your spell. Do we actually show Commandeer when it happened? Is this a card you did? Okay. Commandeer, uh, this Cold Snap rare. Um, didn't see a whole lot of play for a very long time. Uh, there was a cycle of them. I think I, I, I don't know if... Many other people besides me has played any of the cycle and constructed before. Soul but... Spike, Fury of the Horde. Yeah, th this is a cycle that really benefits from uh, having a ton of extra resources. Things like Gristle Brand with Soul Spike was something that I was doing for a little while in Modern, way back in the early 2010s. And uh, Commandeer, though, now with uh, Up the Beanstalk with all these blue cards is just so backbreaking against cards like the One Ring and Crashing Footfalls. So Dawn doesn't go for the Cascade. Instead, Potentially holding up Flame of Anor here. But, yeah, that, that will let her... Ooh. So now we have to respond to the Teferi. Yeah, here's Flame of Anor. Yeah, let's kill a Rhino, draw two. Because mm. Tidebinder is a wizard. Oh, that's so sick. That makes Flame of Anor so much better. I feel like the Rhino's deck is about to go out of control in general. There's Force Negation, that's so we can stop the Teferi. Actually, drew a pair of Force Negation, so we can stop the Teferi and have Force Negation back up for it next turn as well after we make our Shardless Agent tokens. I, th I think we got to pitch the Force. It's our... I we see, I can't see. pitch the Shardless Agent. That's the only other blue card. But this is gonna, still going to be a seven-point attack com coming across. Dawn's going to fall to two. But the Shardless Agent presumably does stabilize the battlefield. All right. I see a Fury in Mangus's hand. That will draw yeah. a card off the Beanstalk if he plays it or pitches for it next turn. There's also another Bloodbraid Elf if he wants to have another Haste creature. Oh, wow. That's actually a pretty nice pickup here. Dawn finds Murktide Regent, so we can go Shardless Agent and Murktide Regent now. Yep. We have the necessary lands for that. So I'm going to go ahead and fetch with Wooded Foothills. It's going to go down to one. Yeah, not a big difference between uh, two and one in this matchup. No copies of Ren and Six in Mangus's deck. Finds Mountain. She might go for Blood Moon Shardless Agent. That might be what she's looking at. But I kind of like Shardless Agent, Murktide Region a bit better. That With two basics on the other side, all it does is shut down blue for just a short while. There's value in getting the Blood Moon down. You shut Mangus off of blue mana. Stop Omnath, potentially. The problem is, once you Blood Moon, you can't Murktide region. Oh, only one island. Good call. Okay, here comes the Murky Merc. Gonna exile a bunch of instants and sorceries. I see a Force of Negation, a Flame of Venora, a Crashing Footfalls, a Valinot Burst, and a Land. So, plus four counters on the Murktide region. He big. Got a 7-7, seven, seven, and now... Like, Don's been allergic to the Shardless Agent the whole game. Just yeah. holding on to it for so long. There it is. All right. Oh, Oof. right off the top. Save us. The Professionals put it on top, and now Don's mad that uh, her Murktide's one too small. Yeah, yeah. Slight missequence in ordering there. Not doubt it will matter. Well, you say that, but... The difference between 7 and 8 when your opponent is at 12 and you have a couple 4-4s four on the table can be massive. We'll see. We will. 
Uh, so, Dawn trying to figure out if she can afford to attack here. If Fury comes down, it can only kill one four four or a tapped 3-2 and a 2-2, and I think that that's fine. To Fairy Time Raveler, the pickup, this one could so, be... Fairy Bouncing bad. Murktide, Evoke Fury, dealing with one of the Rhinos is still not, not enough. Yeah. We can trade the second Rhino for Mangus's remaining one, and then the Shardless Agent trades for the Bloodbraid Elf. Yeah, I actually think Dawn might be about to win this game. Mangus here has a couple of pieces of interaction, but I don't know if they're quite strong enough. We're going to start with Teferi Time Raveler. That's going to get Murktide off the table for a turn. It's yeah. going to be a way to prevent some damage. And this actually makes leaving the Crashing Footfalls in the graveyard better. <laughs> now our replayed Murktide will be bigger. Good call. Draws another land, so no <laughs> he help thought there. He just tapped on the, the Crashing Footfalls. I bet she said calculated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just how I drew it up. All right, Mangus draws off the Teferi minus. We'll see what he wants to do. He has a Fury. You'll see if he has a red card to pitch for it. He has a Bloodbraid Elf in hand, so certainly can evoke the Fury if he wants to. Now we'll draw a card off up the Beanstalk in play and deal with one of the Rhinos, but maybe he wants to deal with the two, two toughness creatures that are in play. We're going to shock down to seven. Play another Beanstalk, we get to draw a card, and then the Fear is going to draw an extra card when we do the pitch. I think that was a Shardless Agent drawn off the Beanstalk. I concur. We draw two. Oh, Commandeer. I don't think he's got enough blue cards to pitch to it, but I don't know what he drew, and we know he has Shardless Agent. But there's not really a good Commandeer target left at this point. All right, we're going to attack with both. This is a forced trade with the Rhinos and the Shardless Agent. And now Mangus is going to have no creatures versus Delosier's uh, Tidebinder. And then we have uh, the Murktide Regent in hand. Yeah, and we, we can cast Murktide and Blood Moon this turn. Wow, that'll be a nice little sequence and from Dawn here. It'll be a 4-4 Murktide. So if we just attack with Tidebinder to the face, put Mangus to 6, then we have Lethal next turn. I think, we draw Shardless? No, we drew a Baseju who endures, which we can use to blow up a Beanstalk, but it gives Mangus access to another land, and I don't think we can go Blood Moon, Murktide, Baseju, because we don't have a legendary creature in play. So, my guess, we just go for Murktide plus Blood Moon. Yeah, just go for the jugular. I kind of like killing Teferi. Is that weird? Mangus did shock down to seven, so... Just the 4-4 Murktide plus the Tidebinder is lethal next turn. Sure, okay. But I forgot the, it was going to be a 4-4. I just but, assumed it was going to be larger. But the Tidebinder is going to be on the ground. I kind of like just putting Mangus to 4 so the Murktide itself is lethal. Right, I, I think you're right. I think that's a, a better play. And, and the Blood Moon shuts off Teferi from being cast, another Teferi to bounce it. Yeah, Does it also shuts off the Shardless Agent from being cast too, which I guess doesn't matter that much, but it does let him draw a card and maybe find Solitude. Yeah, face. Face is the place. All right. Let's replay that Murktide Regent. Likely going to be paying three. Oh, just going to eat, eat the whole graveyard. Plus one counter. And now the Blood Moon. No more uh, blue mana for James Mangus. We're going to go back his way. I think that was another land. That was Zagoth Triome. Yep. Pretty bad spot for Mangus, all things considered. See if he can find an answer to the Murktide Regent. We know if he finds Solitude, we're going to be off to the races. Well, does he oh, even have a white card to yeah, pitch? Yeah, I think not. Never mind. All right. That's a Sacred Foundry. Wow. Cycles the Triumph. Desperation move. And GG. Don Delizier takes game number two, forcing the third and final. Really, really good sequencing there from Don. The Commandeer was a huge swing. I think she... Basically, I had to navigate perfectly from that point on yeah. and uh, did it very well. Uh, you know, the Murktide Regent was a huge draw. I think that that was the one that actually threatened turning the corner very quickly uh, and, uh, you know, allowed Dawn to get back into the game. Look, I just want to say Dawn beat a Commandeer on her crashing footfalls. That was impressive stuff. Uh, as these players do take a look at their sideboards and shuffle up here for game number three, I'd like to take this time to say thank you to our sponsors here at the Apex Gaming Invitational Series. Uh, Ultimate Guard is the top of the line for TCG supplies from the Katana Sleeves to the Archive Deck Boxes. Make sure to ask your local game store today for Ultimate Guard products. Uh, Moxfield.com is a wonderful new deck building website that allows you to construct and share 
deck lists with ease with your friends on all forms of social media from Discord to Twitter. I've been using them on my personal stream for the last few days, and they've been quite nice. Thank you so much to Wings Etc., Grill and Pub, for keeping us fed and happy on these long tournament weekends. We'll eat there the other night, and we'll probably be heading back there again this evening to yeah. hang out with the fine folks here in Caldwell, Ohio. You might be thinking about the beans, but I'm thinking about the wings. <laughs> Nicely done. That's one chuckle. Yeah, yeah. And last but definitely not least, our marquee sponsor is TCGplayer.com. TCG Player's Marketplace is your one-stop shop for any singles needs from uh, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic the Gathering, and even now Disney's Lorcana. Check out TCGplayer.com for anything you need. And if you're a retailer and you're trying to sell cards, well, there's no better place than TCG Player's Marketplace if you want to reach a wide audience. You can also check out their sister website, uh, TCG Player Infinite, and read awesome strategy articles from the names of Frank Karsten, uh, as well as our own uh, Emma Partlow. Okay, game three. Players have drawn their hands. Is there a gemstone caverns? There is! Lucky! All right, it's upside hey, down. It has a luck counter on it, Don. Put a luck counter on it! Uh, no. <laughs> I'm on Don's side on this one. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, upside down is the luck counter. Okay, Mangus heads up, does not fetch on turn one. Going to protect himself from ice. And now going to shock with Steam Vents and pass the turn. Likely going to be icing himself. But if Don is heads up here, I think an ice on Mangus's Steam Vents makes a lot of sense. Yeah, protect yourself from, from the opposing ice. I like it. She also has Tidebinder, so if she goes ice your Steam Vents, Mangus not going to have a play here, really, and then... On her turn, she plays land three, has outburst or tidebinder, says go. Mangus could get annihilated. Yeah. There's there's not much else for Mangus to have here when he shocks on turn two. You know, didn't play enough the beanstalk. This deck is a cascade deck. It has very few plays for under three mana. Yeah. I think maybe Don is thinking about mystical dispute, maybe holding blue cards for uh force negation, commandeer, holding red cards for fury, but we are going to get punished here, and I mean, it, this was calculated. Don knew that this was a possibility and said, this is okay. Yeah, there's got to be a, a reason here. We'll right. see how she navigates these next couple turns. Now, Don, uh, basically what she's saying now is that, okay, I can ice you, and your turn three is ruined as well, and then I regain initiative again. Yeah, and so. just picked up a Shardless Agent, so has a Cascader for next turn. Commandeer is the draw for Mangus. Oof. Upkeep, we're going to fetch. Are we going to see another Crashing Footfalls get commandeered? Maybe. We'll see if Don can navigate around it. Maybe picks up Force and goes for it on Mangus' turn to protect some protect their uh, spells. We'll now, just wait and see. Th this one, if it happens, won't be as bad. There's no up the beanstalk for Mangus. Mm, yeah. <laughs> do we take out the ability for further icing, or do we take out the potentially the ability for up the beanstalk? Dawn That's goes a good for question. the forest. Yeah, I like the target. I guess yeah, Leyline Binding. There's definitely a Teferi in hand for Mangus as well. The Binding, we are on... Uh, once the Sacred Foundry hits, we'll be on four types. All right, plays a Sacred Foundry, tapped. It says go back Dawn Delizier's way. Now she has access to three mana. We can go for Valon Outburst. I don't know that the Commandeer has two other blue cards to pitch with it, but we'll wait and see. Mangus, back your way. Draws Island. That's to Fairy Time Raveler in hand. Could go ahead and try to deploy that to turn off the Valon Outburst, but uh, here we go. Outburst on your instep. Mangus pulls the commandeer to the front of his hand. All right, here comes the deterministic crashing footfalls. This is going to make two 4 4 rhinos, but who makes the rhinos? Still up for debate. Don's going to be casting it, but Mangus going to try to defend with the commandeer more than likely. We saw him pull it to the front. He's going to take a look at these. Cards revealed uh, to see kind of how Don sideboarded in the matchup, maybe what tools he has to expect down the line. Uh, he sees subtleties, he sees multiple copies of Blood Moon. He already has two basics, so 
not too worried about Blood Moon, I don't think. With this many cards revealed, you can also maybe get a good idea of what's in the hand right. for Dawn Delosier. Pitches two copies of Fairy Time Raveler to steal the Crashing Footfalls, and Mangus is the one with the Rhinos now. I mean, is that even that bad of a trade for Dawn? Fairy is one of the best cards against you. True, but it's already... Like you're too late to the party. If he, if Do if James had cast Teferi there, right? Maybe that puts the shield down for Commandeer, and then the game just ends with two yeah. four fours because they just smash into the Teferi. But uh, Don has another Cascader, so that's going to make a more Rhinos to trade with these Rhinos. Mm -hmm. So you've effectively traded the Commandeer and the two Teferis for two Crashing Footfalls. Right. That's not the worst overall trade. Now. You know, maybe Mangus has ways to deal with those Rhinos. Yeah, we see Leyline Binding and Fury in hand and a Solitude, I believe. So backing it up with that kind of interaction, I like taking the Rhinos. But this is uh, being able to, you know, force the Commandeer on the end step so that Dawn is able to then untap and catch back up immediately on the battlefield rather than taking a huge swing for eight and having Mangus untap yeah. is a much bigger or much smaller tempo swing than it was in game two. All right, Don produces two more tokens. One of them does get eaten by a Leyline Binding. We're going to go back James Mangus' way. Let's see, finally land five. I see Ooh. Fury. Here's Beanstalk. We, Do we yeah, have we, the answer? We found Beanstalk, so red or white card would be huge. It's land. land. Attack for eight. I assume we're going to trade here with a 4-4 four, yeah. four on a 4-4. Four, four. And then Don has Flame of Venor to clean up the other 4-4 four, four to at least get parity. If Dawn can find a land here, she might be able to catch this Windswept Heath with the Tidebinder, and then Flame of Anor with a Wizard on the battlefield, just to kill the remaining Rhino and draw two cards. Tidebinder just turning on Flame of Anor gets me going. <laughs> oh, second Flame of Anor instead is the draw. Not a bad one. Yeah. All right, we're definitely going to be attacking here since we're not trading with the Rhino, and uh, we'll see if Mangus falls into the yeah. trap. Just passes the turn. All right, finds Teferi, Time Raveler. That's a good one. Attack for four, Dawn down to 12. I assume we'll see a Tidebinder in response to this Teferi. I think so as well. Yeah, because it lets you pressure the Teferi, which at this point is more important than dealing with the Windswept Teeth. Right. And you want to get the Wizard down anyway to power up these Flames. You know, once you have the 3-2 and the 2-2 two -two on the battlefield, Teferi pluses, you can attack it down. Teferi minuses to bounce either of your creatures, you can attack it down. Yeah, so here... Ooh, Don's going to go for Flame of Nor to draw two cards. Finds Mystical Dispute! What a hit! But does she have another blue... Oh, the yeah. Luck counter, <laughs> sir! The luck counter! Okay, well, that was pretty good. Okie dokie. It's like Mangus taking the opportunity with Delosier having less than three mana up to crack this fetch land. Really heads up sequencing from Mangus, playing around the Tidebinder very well. Uh, we're going to go fetch in and pass in the turn. Dawn ticking the Rhinos down to two. Finds land number six, so we can play Tidebinder and Flame of Venor here. That will allow to kill the Rhino and draw two cards. I like that. I like doing those, both of those things. <laughs> Those are good things. Yeah, you should do those things. Yep. She doesn't have to be hasty about it. She did draw Shardless Agent, so that might be a better play. We go Shardless Agent, make some 4-4s, four attack for 2, and then on your turn, when you go for Fury or Solitude, we go Stifle that ability, untap, kill your thing, draw 2 cards, yeah. smash you for 10. Yeah, it keeps the flame around for a potential Omnath as well. Yeah, just, tr just trade one of these Rhinos. You got two more Rhinos coming in a couple turns anyway. You got your Rhino flooded. All right, Shardless, Agent, Don Delosier on the warpath, getting Crashing Footfalls out. This is the third one cast, and there's one more in Suspend. This is going to be all the Crashing Footfalls unless she finds Endurance. We'll see if Mangus can fight back. Draws for turn. Finds a Leyline Binding. That one's okay, but we're going to start with Fury. Draw a card. Finds a backup solitude. That's actually a pretty nice hit to go with the one in play. And uh, we're going to target the 4 4 Rhino. And in response, Don goes a fetching. And we know it's coming. The Tidebinder. 
And now that is not only going to counter this triggered ability, it's going to remove double strike from the Fury as long as Tidebinder is on the battlefield. Such a wild card. This Tishana's Tidebinder. We've talked about it quite a bit this match already, but it's basically Stifle on a Stick, plus shuts down the card, makes it lose all abilities for as long as the Tidebinder is in play. So now the, the Tidebinder could trade for the Fury if they get into combat. <laughs> it's just a 3-3! Three, three. It's just a 3-3! Three, three. All right. Now, Mangus does have two Solitudes in hand, so he can pitch one, draw a card, eat the Tidebinder, and then the Fury has Double Strike again, so maybe uses that to eat one of the 2-2s two or trade for a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, Dawn going to have to be a little careful here. You know, if we want to play around potential Solitude, we can Flame of Ignore the Fury and draw two cards, and then have... We can then just attack with everything, and if the Rhino jumps in front of even Charmless Agent, the Fire Ice that she just drew will finish it off. All right, destroy the Rhino, draw two cards. Mangus here thinking, oh, maybe I should have main phased the Solitude because the Flame of Anor is on cast and not on resolution to choose two, so... Slide yeah, misstep, but here's Dawn ice. going for lethal. Oh, yeah. The Solitude will keep Mangus alive. We Solitude one of the Rhinos and take 11, fall to one. Yep. This is going to draw a card here for Mangus as well. Mm. We're going to pitch Leyline Binding. Yeah, going to try to draw land and hard cast Solitude next turn. So then we can deal with the other Rhino, block two creatures, gain three life in combat, only take two from an unblocked solid unblocked charmless agent so with a land with yeah once he untaps we do have land five already all right but we are super low on life let's see if mangus can find a way back don here with a commanding board position four attackers versus one blocker force negation and a blue card in hand we'll see if mangus can navigate around it and come back but no way to answer this solitude so uh an all-out attack next turn is is Pretty awkward. We'll see if Dawn decides to wait a turn, because she's got two more Rhinos entering off that Crashing of Footfalls. She can wait one more turn and make a much bigger attack, more difficult attack for Mangus to defend. Well, let's see what she draws. If she draws something like Fire Eyes... Yeah, any know. removal spell for the Fury, then we can get in there. All right, here is Crashing Footfalls. This is the fourth Crashing Footfalls. There are no more in the deck, so if Mangus can find some way to clear the board, Dawn will be mostly out of gas, but... She's super far ahead right now. Is that a dismember? It's another force of negation. There's a card in hand. I don't know what it is. Is that just a scalding tar? Yeah, it's a scalding tar. Okay. It's scalding tar and Charles agent double force. I think is the hand. Okay. All right. So solitude, eating tidebinder, fury, and solitude each maybe blocking Shardless, gaining three up to four, take from four. No. Okay. So. If Dawn swings in here, Solitude's going to eat a 4-4, and then Fury and Solitude both just trade for other things. Hmm. The very least for Dawn, the Solitude can't block and trade, but or block and survive. Yeah, the problem is the Fury is just so... Uh, I guess the Fury is just a 3-3, three -three, so... Yeah. No, because but Fury can still just block a Shardless Agent. Solitude will block the Tidebinder. Right. And we'll take two, but game three, so that'll leave Mangus at two. And uh, Dawn will have effectively traded two creatures for the Solitude. Dawn here trying to figure out how to best play around Solitude if she has any way to punch through it, and I don't think she does. And if she sees that, maybe she just says go and waits for her next turn to go for a big attack with more Rhinos, because two of those Rhinos do have Summoning Sickness. Might just play Charlotte's Agent out here as a 2-2 body. Yeah, with Mangus at 1, I think that makes a lot of sense. You still can hold up a hard cast Force of Negation. Are there any copies of Supreme Verdict or other Wrath effects in Mangus's 75? Can you take a peek? Um, uh, There are not. Saw some uh, Doomscar action in Pioneer with Beanstalk a few months back. That was fun. Don giving this a pretty big think. Uh, this is one of those turns where everything sort of seems obvious, but you really you know don't want to open up a window for Mangus to crawl back into this game. Right. Oh, 
All right. On the brink. Can we sniff out the solitude? The more time you give the Beansock deck, the more likely it is they come back into the game with all those pitch effects, and there's already an up the Beansock on the battlefield. So Dom doing some calculations to see just how bad it is if she attacks all out and Solitude comes down. Worst case scenario is probably like Solitude cast and then Solitude pitch. All right, jamming in. Force play here, Solitude. Draw a card, eat the 4 4. Trade with a Tidebinder and eat a 2 2. Dawn up to 19 from Solitude's ability. Yeah. James Mangus makes the correct blocks. Goes to 2 now. And the Fury has double strike once again. Okay. Dawn going to play Shardless Agent here more than likely just to get another 2 2 onto the battlefield since it is representing lethal. Doesn't cascade into anything. Decides to pass the turn, maybe waiting in case she did board in those endurances, or just wants to have another pitch effect for Force Negation. Yeah. Now, Mangus just drew another Beanstalk, but I don't know if there's... Yeah, it's Beanstalk and Shardless Agent, so he's going to see a couple extra cards here, because we're going to cascade into another Bean. Oh, we might have the Chalice, though. That would be pretty poor at this point. Well, here's a Lavinia, Azorius Renegade. Let's get that one on the screen, because this one is uh, about the same as... A Chalice of the Void, but the damage is already done, you know? Like, the the creature, or all the Rhinos have been cast, but uh, this is, like, a nice one to cascade into against the uh, Crashing Footfalls decks for sure, but right now it's just a little too late. Yeah, it does stop a pitch cast of Force of Negation. And that's it. James Mangus extends the hand. Don Delosier wins 2-1 to one and starts off our 20k Invitational at 1-0. and zero. Team of Rhinos adopting uh, Tishana's Tidebinder. Looking quite good there. Yeah, it looked like Mangus did not have a second green source, so he couldn't cast both the Shardless Agent and the Up the Beanstalk. All right. Uh, if, you know, might have been better to just try to cast Up the Beanstalk, uh, but the Shardless Agent doesn't really pitch to either any of your elementals. Maybe you find, like, a Teferi. I'm not going to chain you, but went for the 2-2, didn't hit what he needed, and uh, impressive stuff for Dawn to come back from two commandeered Crashing Footfalls, yeah. one each in games two and three. 